I hope you're doing well today. Um, this sermon is called, If I Ain't Got You. Uh, let's pray. Father, be with us today. Dwell with us in a many way. Lord, speak from heaven, oh God. You gave me a magnificent message. And God, I pray that you will just be glorified. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. Permeate every heart, every spirit, every soul, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi guys, today's sermon um, is called If I Ain't Got You. I, I um, woke up singing this song because I was... Uh, I'm always uh, not stressing out, um, but uh, stressing about what to preach on Sunday or Saturday or whatever. Any any pastor or preacher will tell you it's it's very stressful when you come down to the wire and like you still. You still don't know. You pray and pray and read and read and nothing's jumping out at you. It's the most stressful thing. And um, I woke up singing this. I had a few titles because sometimes he uh, God gives me titles and then he down loads into me the word and if there's to be a scripture um and if there's to be a song he downloads to me i had a couple titles but when i woke up uh when i woke up in the middle of the night i forgot what those titles were and i started uh singing this song by Alicia Keys, because you guys know, watching me for any length of time, knows that, you guys know that I love music, and this is what he used to do to me all the time. He used to give me a song and then, like, translate it to the kingdom, so that's what he did for me today. So this sermon is called, If I Ain't Got You. Um, I will put the song up when I'm finished. Um, a lot of uh, people, even in the church, I find, they search for things and we come up with blab it and grab it, name it and claim it, all these songs, all these um, things, um, and the Lord wants to say today, he wants to say something simple, he wants to say, I got you, I got you, he's, he's saying, you know, for all you're going through, I just need you to know today that I got you, and I see you, and I'm with you. And no one can harm you. First, he wants you to know that I got you. For every situation you're in, the Lord wants you to know today that he's got you. He's got your back. He's got your answer. He's got everything that you need. And there's no need to... to stress out. I talked about stressing out uh, with preaching a while ago, but stressing out happens um, in every aspect of your life. And he says, there's no need to stress out. I've got your answer right here, right now. I've, I've got it. And he said, I've got you and you have me. And he said, without me, I want you to remember without me, you are nothing without me. And he, 
he wants to say that that to remember who you are and whose you are and who's got you. It's like a parent and a child. Like, if you know that your parents have got your back, you just can soar, like, through everything. I was watching um, um, a interview with Mike Todd and uh, Pastor Rich w Wilkerson. Mike Todd is the pastor of Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Rich Wilkerson is the pastor of Boo Church in Miami, Florida. And Mike Todd had, has just come out with a book, his second book, called Crazy Faith. And they were kind of doing a launch party for Crazy Faith. And um, I've never seen Natalie Todd, M Mike Todd's wife, before. But um, she began to talk about her husband and go, on and on about what a man he was and whatever and it was really wonderful to me and I thought and I thought that must mean everything to him because if the whole world sings your praises but your family knows who you are at home and you you are a jerk it doesn't mean anything I was like, that must mean everything to him, to know that the person close to him, uh, to know that the mother of his four children, uh, the woman who has seen him through everything since he was 15 years old, um, thinks of him that highly, that must mean the world to him. Because there's nothing like your family members, the people who know you the closest, saying how wonderful you are, um, saying how great you are, saying that they love you and they respect you. And there's nothing worse than, say, than having the people close to you saying they don't love you or they don't respect you or or they don't like the person you become um and shifting over to the father if if mike todd can feel that way about his wife could could you do you understand what the Almighty God saying that he he's got you? Do you understand what that means? It means everything. The God who created the heavens and the earth, the God who made everything on this planet, created you, and the fact that he's saying he's got you, what a glorious truth. And it's just, He's just saying he's got you. And he's also saying he is with you in everything, through everything, he is with you. Um, he is for you. And he'll never leave you. He's just saying that he's got you and then and then he just wants you to sit, wants you to know that he'll never leave you. You'll, you'll never, ever be without him. So that title, although it's a great title for a song and a sermon, it'll never happen with him because the Lord says he will never leave you nor forsake you. Even in this time, he wants you to know how special you are to him, how magnificent you are to him, 
how when he doesn't, when he sees you, he doesn't see your mistakes. He sees you as you already are and the person you don't know you are. He sees all insight, all, all, he sees all parts of you and he loves every single part. And he may want to work on several different parts of you, but that doesn't mean he doesn't love that part of you, even though that it, that it takes work. That's the beauty of being human. That you that you are that you are flawed. That you are um, that you need work, because that means. If you admit that, that means you need him, because he works best with flawed people, and he wants you to know right now that there is no way that that he is going to leave you. There is no way that you ain't got him. There is no. There is no way. No church. No pastor. No. Nobody, no mother, no father, no, nobody that can love you the way he can, that can teach you the way he can, that can show you uh, more love and more life the way he can. You've been, you've been, oh my gosh, you've been holding him at a distance. And he's saying, I got you. There's no need to worry. There's no need to hold me at a distance. I won't hurt you like they did. I won't walk away from you like they did. I, I won't, I won't diss you like they did. I won't tell your secrets like they did. I won't put you on blast on Facebook like they did. I won't. He said, I won't betray you like they did. There is somebody, there is somebody right now under the sound of my voice that is dealing with betrayal. And you're so angry at a person and that anger is turning to God because you, you think that he might betray you like they did because they said they would, would never betray you and they did and you're wondering well can i trust god the answer is yes and the lord is saying i will never betray you i will never betray you i will never betray you i will never lie to you i will never cheat on you i will never he says i want what's best for you I love you. 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 And I can't love you any more or any less. My love for you, he's saying, is infinite. My love for you is never ending. My love for you is past your mistakes. My love for you doesn't even see your mistakes. It covers your mistakes. His love, His grace covers a multitude of sins. There's no need to carry that burden alone. He's got you. He's with you. He's for you. He loves you. And He wants me to say that there's nothing that you've ever done in your life that will stop Him from loving you most completely. And real love, real love comes with chastisement sometimes. He says he chastens those he loves. So because you're going through a chastening doesn't mean he doesn't love you. It means he wants to get the best out of you. He wants to get the wine out of the great people. That's what the crushing is about. A few years ago, 
Bishop Jakes uh, did a book called Crushing, and he talked about how uh, wine is made, and um, the grapes have to be crushed, but in the crushing, you get the sweetest juice, you get the sweetest wine, and I'm not a drinker, but the best wine is the is the aged wine. You'll hear why people talk about this is, uh, and they'll talk about the year, and then they'll say the type of wine it is. So this is a, a 97 Bordeaux or whatever, um, because sometimes the best things are worth waiting for. He said, he said, sometimes the best wine is the one that you have to wait for, like a 67, you know, Cabernet is better than like a 2000, you know, wine. Because the more you wait is the, the more wine waits is the more it ferments and the more it gets stronger. So I'm also now talking to those in a waiting period. You've been waiting 10 years. You've been waiting 15 years. You've been waiting five years. You've been waiting three years for that uh, prayer to be answered. And you're like, what is going on? It's not... The weight is not here to drive you crazy. It's there to ferment you. Like, to make you stronger. Fermented wine is wine that sits for, for a long time. Um, fermented wine is wine that sits for a long time. So... All this waiting is meant to bring the potency out of you. It's meant to bring the character out of you. It's meant to bring the sustenance out of you. That's what this is meant to do. So be patient in the wait. Worship in the wait. Do what you got to do and know that he's got you. Know that every circumstance he's got you know that every circumstance he's with you in the name of jesus thank you lord for teaching us that you've got us that you're for us lord that you're with us lord thank you lord for speaking from heaven today we understand that without you or nothing and we don't need all the money and all the cars and all that stuff in fact lord we understand that with all that stuff um comes without if we had all that stuff lord and we didn't have you it becomes pressure that we put on ourselves but if we have you and all that stuff is added, it becomes easier because anything with you behind it becomes easier. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us today. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us that you're with us and that you are for us and that you've got us and that you're here for us today. Thank you, Lord, so much. So, guys, have a wonderful day. Um, I will put the Oichi Keys song up to this message. Um, have a wonderful day, guys. I will... See you soon.
Some people live just for the fame. Some people live for the power. Yeah. Some people live just for the game. Some people think that the physical things divine was within and I've been before that I've said for so far of the superficial but some people Significance 
you've been trying to go, get on this ministry team or that ministry team. He's saying your significance is not in a ministry team. It's, it's wonderful to help out. It's wonderful to join a group. It's wonderful to join a cell group, E group, boo crew, whatever. But the, the most important thing is to have a relationship with Jesus. And he's saying, oh, he's saying too many people that go to church want a relationship with the pastor want a relationship with, you know, somebody high in the ministry. And he's saying, um, I, I need people that want a relationship with me. He's saying, I don't, I don't need the church chasers because church chasers, um, uh, want a relationship with the pastor he's saying i need people that love me it's oh it's wonderful to love and honor your church and love and honor your pastor it is it is wonderful but um the most important thing is to not lose sight of jesus christ and he's saying too many people are following men and women and not following me. Um, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And if that person um, that you are under is not following Christ, um, I would seriously rethink re about uh, following them, no matter if they're like a uh, future pastor or whatever but if you feel in your spirit that um this is not right i would seriously rethink that and he's saying don't be a church chaser be a god chaser he's saying it's wonderful to honor your leaders and we should honor our leaders but in that honor we don't put our leaders above God. You see, that's why a lot of uh, pastors are feeling the pressure and and eventually they are too, it's too heavy to take because a lot of people are unknowingly and sometimes knowingly putting pressure on the men and women that God has ordained to preach his word on on them that God never put on them we put on them and when they fall it's like oh look at that church it fell how can they do that because it's too much pressure it's too much pressure and there is there is um, a pressure that God puts on you um, as a preacher, but there is, that's a healthy pressure. That's a pressure to preach his word and expound truth. But there is also an unhealthy pressure that we put on leadership, um, that, that they have to be some kind of uh, perfect, uh, people and beacons of righteousness. Listen, I don't want anybody to think I am a beacon of righteousness. I don't want anybody to think that I don't make mistakes, that I'm not fallible. I don't want anybody to put me in that God place. Only one being deserves to be there. And that is God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I am, I am a conduit of the gospel. I am not the gospel. I'll say that. I and any other pastor, any other preacher, any other leader, 
is a conduit of the gospel, which means we preach it, we go to school and study and whatever, but we are not the gospel. And and when when a, a person uh, puts their leader up as the gospel, it creates problems because that that pressure and that strain to perform will kill you. That unhealthy pressure. Um, if gone on for too long, it will kill you, and the cracks will begin to show. And so that's what I believe a lot of these leaders are following, are following, are following because we put the, we as people have put the unhealthy God, uh, God-like pressure on them, which God himself didn't put on them. And yes, I believe that preachers should be, um, held, hold themselves to a standard and whatever, but I don't think, um, and I think they need accountability and boards and stuff, but we as humans have taken it too far. It's like almost like um, what Israel did. They, they, God wanted to be their king, but they wanted a king to like that they could see. And the Lord says, "Okay, I'll give you a king that you could see." And that king happened to be crazy as a as a loon. Um, I think he had some mental problems personally, personally saw. Um, I, I think that um, we have put too much pressure on, on leaders, on preachers to be these, this beacon, to not be real people, and we haven't given them room to be real people, to have flaws, to make mistakes to, to, uh, get messy, to, you know, to be just, uh, to be just people, um, and I think that needs to stop, and I think we need to understand that, yes, although they are called of God to preach the gospel, that doesn't negate their human frailty. That doesn't mean they don't have family problems or family issues or uh, issues handling finances or issues handling this or issues handling that. And it doesn't mean uh, that they're not accountable for that. It means that we give them the grace to be human. We need to give our pastors, our leaders, uh, those people who shepherd us, the grace to be human. We need to offer them the same grace that God op offers us. Because um, God has already offered them that grace. And we don't need to say, Hosanna, one day save us and crucify him the next. Because that's what they did to Jesus. They, when Jesus rode in on his donkey, they were like, Hosanna, Hosanna. We're saved, like, save, save us, save us. And then a few days later, they were like, crucify him, crucify him. And let me say, preacher, just continue to preach the word in season, out of season, whether they like you, whether they understand you, just preach the word and go back to the original intention that God set for you. Go back to the original purpose 
go back to when you first believed. What was, what was that like? The Lord said, what did I say to you in the dark? He said, go back to when you first believed. He said, go back. He said, I need you to go back. I need you to forget all the fluff around you. Forget all the distractions. Forget all of this. Forget all of that. And go back to, to when you first believed. Go back to that pa passion. Go back to that fire. Go back to when you first believed. And, and he wants me to say as well. He said, there is grace for mistakes. He wants me to say that to every single preacher. He said, there is grace for mistakes. So receive that grace. You're not God. Only God is God. And there is grace for your mistakes. And correction is not meant to be condemnation. It's meant it's meant to be it's it's meant to be a teaching tool. Correction is not meant to be condemnation. It's meant to be a teaching tool. So those in higher ranking than you that he sends to correct you, those who love you, those who've been in, in the preaching game for a long time, um, let, let them lovingly correct you. He sent them to correct you. It's not like he, he, he hates you and wants to stifle your ministry uh, or what he's put in you. He wants to grow you through your correction and through the people he's put in your life. So let him do that. Because you will turn out to be um, a much more discerning and God-loving person when he's done with you. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you. Bye, guys. I'll see you next week.